I'm Larry Menti. Welcome back to the Delaware Way. We continue our conversation now with State Representative John Kowalko. I appreciate you so much being here, sir. Let's talk about the state's casinos. Uh, there was a give back of some money that was termed a bailout. I'm not sure if that yeah. term is fair, but it was termed a bailout at the time. And the state casinos said they needed that money to exist. As you're watching what's happening just a couple of states away in New Jersey and Atlantic City, and casinos are failing one by one, and the state's allowing them to fail. If a state, if a casino can't make it in this state, shouldn't it just be allowed to fail and be replaced by someone else if they yeah. want to? Well, actually, there would be no one to replace this under the law of Delaware right now. Here's the difference between the Atlantic City or any of the other, uh, any of the other atmospheres that they, they exist in. In uh, 2008, 2009, uh, we decided, uh, and I reluctantly agreed to, uh, to, uh, to support that, we decided to take a larger share from our casinos than we had historically taken. I, I, I think it was used as a filler for the budget, but I don't think it was a fair share to do, and I was hoping we would, since that time, lower the share. Quite frankly, I, it was Senator Pettyjohn just re remarked at, at one of the hearings that Delaware casinos are burdened with a 62% takeout before they pay their expenses, before they pay their and wages. And that's from the state? It goes to the state. The state takes And 62%. New Jersey takes 8%. Exactly, and, and, and that may be on the net or the gross, but I know for a fact that Delaware is taking it from, on the gross. So now you have overhead. You have uh, any attempt to, uh, to, uh, to expand or to make it uh, aesthetically more appealing for the casino. It, it, it's hampered. You're not going to find investors that are going to go in and say, we're going to give 62% off the top. I do have a pet issue that I want to bring up, and okay. that is the, uh, the I-495 bridge. That... Um, this dirt was allowed to pile up over years. And once the I-495 bridge went out of commission and threatened to, to, to fall, every state agency said, oh, not our fault. Every mm -hmm. local agency, not our fault. So no one saw this dirt piling up. No one took responsibility for that bridge in all this time. And my question is, should there be an investigation? That, that's a federal property. Shouldn't there be an investigation as to how that was allowed to happen and who allowed it happen? Oh, I, absolutely. There should, should there be, be an a federal investigation? investigation. There should be an investigation. Into, uh, did we have a failing with our permit system? Did we have? Uh, did they, uh, who was aware? Who was not aware? Why would they not be aware of something that's threatening? I mean, uh, that was that's a serious stuff here. Not just the cost to, to no, repair I understand. it, but what if that bridge had collapsed? And then, and then what would we be left with? Uh, the demand for an investigation. I, I see a lot of this problem in the state of Delaware. And, and, it's and the I Delaware way. This, this, this may be another uh, discussion for another day, but uh, when I look at the, uh, the trust fund, the transportation trust fund, and, uh, and, and, and a push, an ur urgent push to uh, increase the gas tax, uh, 10 cents, and, and, and my take on this is before I will propose to do that, because that's a regressive tax, so that's just the, the, uh, the ethical part of it that, that me as a progressive see as, as a, a burden, you know, on people. But that's not the legitimacy of opposing or supporting it. But it is in the, in the fact that where's that money going to be used? That my, I, if we fail here, 301 uh, bypass, uh, there, there was uh, about two years ago, it appeared in the paper, and I was reading it, that uh, the properties that were accumulated by Dot in a middle town were uh, offered uh, X dollars per, per acre uh, for, the, for, the, for the right of way. And then uh, uh, that, that project went on hold in Middletown, City Council annexed that property, and immediately the value went up fivefold, which we paid. No, I know. Our, I, 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 no, I, 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 I know where you're, where you're going with Where's the investigation? It? And there should be an investigation yes. every single time. But every single time, much like the dirt got pushed under the bridge, the investigation gets pushed away once the story leaves the headlines. And I think something bad happened uh, I think it's not only once the thing uh, the headlines recede. I think it's once the fact that the federal government's going to send us some money for it. So, hey, we got nothing to lose here. Punch his pilots in order. You know, State Representative John Kowalko, I, I appreciated it so much. It was, it was a pleasure to talk to Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. When we come back, we'll talk about Delaware as a startup state for some tech companies. There's one gentleman that we're going to talk to that thinks that the state hasn't done enough that needs to do more.